Kia ora everyone! Welcome to this month's setup for my bullet journal. The country is New Zealand. Thank you guys for voting. I was very, very excited to do this one. Um, I'm a massive Lord of the Rings fan and I've tried to style my hair like an elf this time. And I've also got my Lord of the Rings ring, which my parents bought for me when I was younger. When the Lord of the Rings came out, I was a little, little obsessed. Um, so I'm going to wear that throughout the setup, so I'll just put it on. Whoops, you guys can't see me when I do that. You need to see me when I'm setting it up. Let's just get started and see what we can discover in New Zealand. Okay, so as you're probably aware, New Zealand is world renowned for the stunning scenery and it just seems to have it all. It's got rugged mountains, active volcanoes, spectacular glaciers, picturesque fjords, rolling hillsides, long sandy beaches, deep caves, gorgeous lakes and rivers. The list is endless. So when it came to choosing, it was difficult and I was spoilt for choice. <laughs> but I needed to choose, however, and I knew that I wanted the cover page to really sort of suggest what I felt the most connected to with New Zealand. And for me, that was a Lord of the Rings scene. So Lord of the Rings made a huge impact on the country. Um, the tourism in New Zealand increased by 40% by 2006, which was largely due to the Lord of the Rings trilogy, showcasing all the incredible scenery in the movies. Now, Hobbiton Village is one of the hottest spots for tourists to visit in New Zealand because it's the only set that remains intact from the movies. It's located in Matamata, which is towards the top of the North Island. Um, you can't just wander through Hobbiton, you have to be a part of a tour, which I think would actually be really great because you'd learn so much more and they would just make sure you wouldn't miss any key spots. So I definitely support that. And I would hate for it to get ruined from you know people being silly, like walking through and sort of trampling things that they shouldn't. So definitely support that. So I knew I wanted to do Hobbiton. So I decided to create like a blended scene because I wanted to show some awesome scenery, but I also really wanted it to feel obviously Lord of the Ringsy without literally drawing Frodo Baggins, of course. <laughs> um, so I decided to take a view from inside the Baggins Hobbit hole, where I could have our traveling girl sitting at the entrance, like looking out on the happy and friendly village down below. Um, I found a beautiful image of the Green Dragon Inn, which is where all the hobbits chill and be merry together in the Shire. So I thought it was such a nice choice for the cover. Um, this inn is fully functioning and you can actually have food and ale when you finish your tour of Hobbiton. It looks such a beautifully quaint little slice of heaven and I can't wait to go there one day. It's on my list. And then to tie another element of Lord of the Rings but also the attractions in New Zealand itself, I thought I would add far away in the distance um, Mount Doom. So this is a popular destination to go to if you're visiting New Zealand. The real name is not Mount Doom, of course. It's called Mount Naruhoe, and it is an active volcano on the North Island. So it's not really in sight from Hobbiton. I just thought it would be cool to have the impending doom in the background to really add another layer of like Lord of the Rings in the scene. So a little bit of how I'm creating this piece. I knew I wanted to keep it all within the circle as if you're looking out of the Hobbit hole itself and I knew that would look quite nice once I put it into the journal as well because it gives you a you know sort of a concise area to work within um, it, it brings that shape element in and everything it draws your eye into that circle area I blended a couple of references so I had a reference from inside like inside seeing the door open within inside the Hobbit hole so I kind of used that. Then I used a reference of the girl's body position um, and so I could get all the folds of the fabric correct. Um, and then I also used a reference of Mount Doom in the background and then that Hobbiton scene that I described before, which was the, the Green Dragon Inn. And it actually had like a Hobbit hole in front. The photo, I, I think I, I'll put this, the image on screen if I can, otherwise I'll link it down below. Um, but yeah, it was just such a gorgeous photo and I was glad I could kind of entwine the three pieces together to make it look sort of like a realistic place that you would see outside this door, um, but just not, it's not actually all there as one. But that's okay, because artistic license, we're allowed to do that stuff. So I use watercolor to do the majority of the picture, and then I just can't help myself at the end that I just have to sharpen it up a bit and add some more depth and sort of detail by using my Prismacolor pencils. So that's just going over areas that I feel just lacked a little oomph, you know? 
So once I did that, I went in with my highlights with my white gel pen and then she was finished. Oh, I also added a little sunset in behind Mount Doom because I thought that would be nice, like almost fiery at the top of Mount Doom. You know what I mean? Now before I cut it out, when the piece is finished, I actually scan it in to work on the digital version of this. I do sell digital versions of my bullet journal setups now. I have them available on my website and my Etsy shop, which are linked down in the description box. But these also go out to my patrons for free each month as part of their package. So if you're interested in becoming a patron of mine, just check out the Patreon link in the description box and you can see what um, freebies and extra content that you receive. So that's what I do with the cover page. And then after I've done all the scanning, I'll cut it out and stick it in and just finish off any little bits on that front cover page. Oh, and then I always love to do my, my um, Dutch door. So this one was literally the door opening up, which I found really cool. That just, I love stuff like that. And then I thought I'd cut through the nameplate there where the name could have gone on the front. I thought I'd do a little sneaky peephole through onto the base page where the calendar will go. And that is how the front cover page for March turned out. Now I'm moving on to the calendar page for the month of March. And I thought I would focus a little bit of the sort of symbolic elements of New Zealand on this page. So I went with the pretty much the national emblem that's known really well in Australia and I think worldwide, and that's the silver fern. It's been a symbol of New Zealand since the 1880s. To Maori people, the shape of the fronds stood for strength, stubborn resistance and enduring power. Um, but to the Pākehā, which are New Zealanders of non-Māori descent, the fern symbolised their sense of attachment to their homeland. Now, I've had a fair few Kiwi friends over the years, and I learnt that word Pākehā from um, one of them because she used to call me a Pākehā because I loved learning bits of Māori terminology from her and I just adored the music she would play at work. Um, I actually fell in love with one of the bands she showed me, which is called Fat Freddy's Drop. They're a seven piece band that have an awesome sound that's like a funky blend of jazz and hip hop and reggae. Um, I would have loved to include some of their music on here, but I can't for copyright reasons. So if you're interested, I'll have a link to one of my favorite songs down in the description box. They are just awesome. Now, the other thing I had to include because it's also so well known throughout the world for New Zealand. I think I even just called the New Zealanders them and that's Kiwis. So the national animal for New Zealand is the kiwi and it's a flightless bird who is mainly nocturnal and is about the size of a chicken. Um, but until I really went on the search for these birds, I didn't realize how darn cute they are. They've got like long beaks that actually have nostrils at the end that can find their prey even before they see it. They've got like hair, hair like feathers and short little legs. They're possibly the cutest birds I've ever seen. So no wonder New Zealanders treasure them. They treasure these guys, heaps of sanctuaries for them, and then using them on the coat of arms, the emblems, logos, and crests, and even on New Zealand currency as well. I wanted to keep this page quite simple in color, just use sort of gray and black tones throughout. Um, but I did want to add something. Oh my gosh, I just said something with a K at the end. One of my subscribers pointed that out to me recently. I was horrified, but it's true. I literally just said it. So I'm gonna keep it in there. That must be part of me. Um, but yeah, anyway, so I wanted to include something that uh, was quite quirky that I discovered. In a place called Hawke's Bay on the North Island, there's a hill that holds the Guinness World title for the longest place name in the world. It's got 85 letters and I'm sure it's impossible to pronounce, but I'm going to give it a go. I am sure I just bastardized that. I apologize. It was extremely tricky. Even the locals, I think, just shorten it to Taumata Hill anyway, but it was fun giving it a go. But yes, yeah, so I found that very interesting. So I wanted to include it on this spread and I just put it in a big curling banner at the bottom in the Kiwi's beak. 
um, and then the calendar page was finished. And now I'm moving on to the next page, which is where I do my needs and wants list. I sometimes like to include something that you might buy in the country or something quite unique to the country itself. And this one, I decided to focus on the Ponamu, which is basically a green stone or a New Zealand jade. It's a hard, durable stone found only in the South Island. And it's considered a treasure by the Maori culture and is formed into either tools like knives and chisels, etc., or into jewelry. So I thought I would showcase a few of the jewelry styles that they tend to make the Ponamu into. The first design at the top is looking like a fish hook and that's called a Hamer towel and that is said to bring prosperity, good health and safe travels and it's also used to signify the connection to the water. The next one down is a talkie worn as a symbol of strength, wisdom and bravery and this is just like a straight sort of knife design. And then the bottom one is a koru which depicts new beginnings, life and hope and this this one here resembles the unfurling frond of the native New Zealand silver fern. So yeah, everything ties together and is all connected and I really, really love that. Now another treasure of the Maori culture is the pawa. It's a large sea snail that is a delicacy to eat and its shell is used in art and crafts and jewellery making. So I thought that would tie in nicely with the jade as well. Um, so that's what I'm doing in the background. I just put it as an element at the top and bottom just to tie the spread together and it just comes in these beautiful shades of green and blue and touches of purple and pink. They're, it's just stunning. So um, yeah, that's the shell of it that you see here in my drawing. And you might've seen a lot of jewelry with it and not realized that it's actually the shell of a sea snail. We call it in America and Australia, we call them abalone, but they're, yeah, they're called power over in New Zealand. And I also learned that Xena the warrior princess, which was filmed in New Zealand, had a weapon that was decorated using these shells. You might notice I'm using my watercolor directly into my notebook this time. I often will use it on a separate watercolor page because I like to use a lot of water in my sort of more detailed um, paintings. But I thought with this one, I would just use a little wash of color where I can over the spread. Um, and so this journal that I'm using is one that I've come out with myself. It's on my shop and my Etsy shop if you didn't know about it. It's 180 GSM pages, um, so it holds the water pretty well. And um, yeah, there's no ghosting and bleeding and nothing like that. So I love using watercolor in my journal. So I'll probably do more of that in the future as well, just because it feels quite effortless and yeah, I love it. Um, so that's why these colors are popping quite nicely, but looking sort of effortless. I said that twice, but that's what it was, it was no effort. <laughs> um, and now I'm just using my fine liner to go over it um, to, yeah, like just make everything pop out a little bit further. And then after titling the two columns, this page was finished. Now I'm on to the meal planner page where I plan my monthly meals in a weekly table. Now I was once again spoilt for choice with what to include on this page. Um, one of the things I would have loved to have included, but I just couldn't work out a way to draw it, was the hungi. Um, the hungi is a form of cooking by the Maori people and it's like a barbecue, but it's underneath the ground. So you dig a pit and there's hot stones in there and you put your fo food into wire baskets beneath the ground and cover it up. And you know, in a couple of hours later, you'll have like barbecued food. So really interesting way of cooking in this earth oven. Um, but yeah, I just had no idea how to draw that. So I thought I would just mention that so you know that it's very important. Um, but then I would do a few th other things on this spread. I decided to do the kiwi fruit, which is actually originally a Chinese fruit, but it was named in New Zealand after the kiwi bird because it looked similar. It's got those, you know, brown, short, little fluffy hairs. Um, and I, that was a news to me. I didn't realize it originated in China. Um, but yeah, there's a heap of kiwi fruit orchards in New Zealand and it's one of their biggest exports. There's apparently over 2,900 orchards. So they really kind of made it their own. And I love kiwi fruit. They're probably one of my favorite fruits. So I thought it would be nice to include on this page. I've also added the kumura in the background, which is a sweet potato. And the manuka honey is what's coming underneath the kiwi fruit. Now, after reading about manuka honey, I want to go out and buy some because apparently it's 
a specialized honey that's antibacterial and it heals wounds. It's good for immunity and digestion, reduces inflammation and irritation on the skin. Um, so that might be one to like have around and be quite handy and if it, if it works. It's not um, clinically proven, but it sounds pretty amazing. Um, and also it's from a one tree. So it's from the Manuka tree. They call it monofloral, so it means the nectar comes from that one manuka tree and that's what makes it special and unique because most raw honeys come from all different kinds of nectar. I also wanted to show a wine bottle on this page because the Marlborough region is famous, I think worldwide, it's definitely very famous in Australia, um, as in my rule of thumb if I'm out at a restaurant and I see a white wine is from Marlborough, I'll get it because I know it's going to be good. They, are, they, they just have the best, crispiest tasting wine there. And yeah, I thought this one was really cool because it was called Sean the Sheep. And I just, I don't know if it's a huge brand over there, but um, I really liked the label. So I illustrated that just to sort of tie in that wine vibe in the page. And then the last thing I included on the meal planner page was this burger. This is a burger um, from Berg Burger and they are world famous for their very inventive and tasty burgers. They're a boutique store in Queenstown and just by the sounds of it do amazing burgers that people come from all over the world to experience. Um, I learned about them from my husband who went to New Zealand um, quite a few years ago now with his work and he had one and it's still to this day the best burger he's ever had. <laughs> and here's a look at the finished page. And now moving on to my mind map page. This is a page that I always like to, to find a woman of importance from the country or just someone reflective of the culture there. I was torn by three and I'll explain my three choices. So we have Lord, who you probably have heard of as she's a well-known singer songwriter from New Zealand um, who's had a lot of hits recently. Um, and then I thought that it might be nice to do the politician who's their current Prime Minister, um, Jacinda Ardern. She's actually done amazing work keeping New Zealand um, to be actually the best place right now in how they've handled the coronavirus pandemic. They've kept it under control um, really well and it's um, due to her efforts as Prime Minister. So she was awesome and it was a good choice as well. But I ended up going with my third option that I investigated and her name is Hayley Westenra. So she is a classical singer, a soprano with an amazing voice. I'll once again leave links to some of her music or her videos down in the description box. Um, but yeah, her voice is amazing and she's a household name for New Zealand. And she's really hit the charts on the classical sort of um, scale. She was the, the fastest selling album in the UK classical charts ever with her debut album, Pure. She was sung personally for Queen Elizabeth and Prince Harry and Prince William. And then I think President George W. Bush as well, like heaps of important people she sang for. And then she sang as well at major sporting events like the FA Cup final, Mercedes Cup in Los Angeles, the Rugby World Cup in 2011, which is when the All Blacks actually went on to win the title. So that would have been quite special for her, I think. But yeah, so I ended up choosing Hayley because I really liked the sound of her voice and was impressed that she'd actually sung in 13 different languages throughout her career. So she, you know, on her travels and her performances, she would learn the native language and um, perform using that. So obviously that would really impress the crowds at her concerts. I think that was really nice. So I feel like it kind of suited the theme that we're going for on this channel of, you know, learning more about the world around us. And I thought it tied that quite nicely together. She's also the world's youngest UNICEF ambassador, which is amazing. She works a lot for children's rights and just seems like a lovely person in the videos I watched. So yeah, so here she is on this spread. I've decided to draw her a little bit differently to my usual mind map pages. I thought I would do her all in um, grayscale this time. So I'm only using three pencils, the white, the black and a gray and just trying to work on the tonal values across her skin and facial features. And then I thought I would leave her hair blank for the moment. I basically didn't really know what I wanted to do with her hair yet. 
I just didn't feel like adding texture. Um, I didn't feel like adding marker to this one at all. So I yeah left it blank in the end because I thought it looked really quite powerful and that that pure blonde also made me think of Lord of the Rings. Kind of looked a bit elvish. So I thought, hey, let's let's go with it. Um, so to bring it all together, I put a circle in the background and I really wanted to include some of this washi tape that I had. I knew I wanted to do something really contrasting in behind her um, and I knew I wanted it to be quite black. So I had this washi tape that had all these feathers on it, which also just made me think of the silver fern as well. Um, and I just loved the colors, so I just went with it. So I've just put like a strip of washi tape in behind her. I wasn't sure whether to cover the entire back bit, but I, I didn't in the end. I decided to just keep one feature strip there and then just color in the rest in black. And yeah, it just felt like it really popped the, um, the face out from the background. I think it needed that. Uh, and then to tie in the national flower on this page, which I always like to include with my mind map spreads, I put the kawaii, which is the national flower, in her hair, just sort of laying like it was a sort of a Grecian bunch of grapes because <laughs> the flower itself really it sort of dangles. It really hangs and drapes down. So I thought it might be cool if I draped it over her hair. So <laughs> that's what I'm drawing here. And once again, I just didn't want to add too much color to this. I kind of wanted it to be quite muted. So I just used gold to enhance that yellow because it's a yellow flower. So instead of using yellow, I just thought I'd use gold to tie in with the washi tape. Um, don't forget to check out my Patreon page where I have pretty much uploaded the real-time version of this and the cover page to it. Um, and you get to watch that with me blabbing or just some nice music while you see a little bit more thoroughly of how I create these pieces. And this is how the mind map page turned out. And now it's time for the goodliness page, which is where I put all my habit trackers, basically. It's how I keep myself trying to be the best I can be and track all those good habits, um, like drinking water, which I am still yet to do. Haven't even had a glass today. Ridiculous. Plenty of teas, but no water. <laughs> anyway, so on this page, I decided to focus on the adventure sports that you find commonly in New Zealand, and I'm sure is a big pull for tourists to go there. It's got beautiful mountain ranges, which would have the ideal locations for um, skiing and snowboarding. And then there's something called heli skiing, which is where you can get a helicopter up to the top of a peak and then just ski down this slope that's pretty much untouched. You know, there's no trails and stuff. So I think you'd have to be a, a pretty professional skier to do that or incredibly thrill seeking. Um, so I tried to put that in there. I've, I've basically tried to include a lot of the sports throughout this vertical page. Um, so I had the heli skiing at the top with the mountains in the background. And then I've got the bungee jumping, which is very interesting because it's the world's first permanent commercial bungee site. It's above a river called Kauro River. Um, so this is the Kauro Gorge Suspension Bridge, which is just near Queenstown in the South Island of New Zealand. And my husband has actually done this bungee jump when he was able to visit Queenstown those years ago for his work. Um, very, he's very lucky, but I'm glad I didn't know he was jumping off bridges while I was at home sipping tea. Um, I'm still not sure whether I would have the courage to do this or not. I think I would like, I think I'd like to, but I'm just not 100%. I always used to say that I would rather skydive than bungee jump, but now I'm older and I've got kids of my own. I feel I've become way too afraid of it all and just don't know if I could do either, to be honest. I think it's something I'd like to do, but I would need a lot of support and maybe I don't know, I'd need everyone around me to be doing it as well, um, just to give that, you know, group motivation. Um, so maybe one day when I visit there, I'll get the courage to do it with my family or something. But yeah, if anyone's done it, let me know how you felt about it or hopefully give me good tips <laughs> on getting over that kind of fear. Um, and then the at the bottom, I've got the um, shot over jet, which uh, friends of ours who are Kiwis from Nelson, they actually, I remember them telling me about the shot over jet. It's a very high powered twin engine jet boat that will take you on a massive adventure, a high speed adventure through lakes and rivers on the South Island. 
Um, it starts in Lake Wakatipu and then it goes through the Kawaro River. Um, so underneath that bungee jump bridge and yeah, it gets up to a speed of 95 kilometers per hour. So it would be thrilling and it takes about an hour. I think I'd be game enough to do that, <laughs> but who knows? Um, yeah, and so that looks awesome. So I wanted to, and that was just always in my head. I just remember that, that name shot over jet really clearly. So I wanted to put that in the spread. And then the last adventure sport that I put up there is the zip lining adventures, which I definitely, definitely want to do one day. So they do all sorts of these through, whether it be through the forests or between the canyons above the rivers. Um, it would be amazing, I think, no matter where you are in New Zealand, because there's, you know, incredible scenery everywhere. So I don't think you'd be let down doing zip lining. So yeah, if you're that way inclined and you like adventure sports, this is the place to go. So yeah, this whole spread was dedicated to that. And I'm just using a little bit of um, my water brush again. I got this new brush here that I'm using, which is a Kuretake water brush. So it holds the water in there for you and you can use it with your watercolor. Or here I'm using it just with a bit of my marker on a plate. And then I just water it down a little bit with the water just to soften it out. And then you can sort of blend it across the page a bit easier. It gives it a lighter texture as well. Um, so yeah, I didn't add much colour, just a bit of blue and a bit of green. And then once I had finished colouring it all in, I just stuck in a printout that I had done before, which I will also leave a link to a free downloadable for that if you wanted to set up your goodliness page like this. Um, and it just has six, oh no, it's got nine um, grid sections, little mini calendars for you to track each habit individually. So I've just stuck that on there and then titled mine and then we were finished with this page. And now we are onto the final page of the first part of this New Zealand setup. I will continue next week with my weekly setup where I do the rest of the weekly pages. Um, so, but for this first week in the spread, I decided to do the tallest mountain of New Zealand, which is Mount Cook. And I was, actually blown away by the photos of this mountain. It always seemed to be in front of this lake and the lake itself is just absolutely turquoise, like pure, pure blue. And every photo looked like it. So I don't think it's Photoshopped. I think it might be legit that color in real life. If anyone's ever been there, can you please clarify this for me? Is it this blue in reality? It would be incredible if it is. Um, but yeah, so it looks amazing and the peak in the background that I'm drawing is Mount Cook, also known in the Maori language as Auraki. And actually talking about um, clear lakes, the clearest lake in the world is actually Nelson's Blue Lake and it's got a visibility of up to 80 meters deep, which I cannot even comprehend. This lake, however, here is called Lake Takapo um, and so that's just at the base of Mount Cook and just look beautiful in this picture it was so striking so I drew this one all in pencils I've just used colored pencils for this one and basically left the paper to be the snow-capped mountains and then to make sure that you could see those mountains I just colored in a little bit of the sky or like an example of the sky would be there just by adding a little blue rim around the top of the mountain and then for the titles of each day on this page I decided to use a little swirl or a koru um, which is that fern, the resembling of the fern that rolls up at the end. Um, and then just use my, my dark blue pit artist pen to fill in the numbers. And then this spread was finished. So I hope you liked um, seeing what I discovered on my journey. As I said, there was so much content. I definitely missed a bunch of stuff, but this is what I could fit in. And there's still a few more coming next week in the weeklies. Um, but I hope you enjoyed it and liked what I shared with you and as a little quirky game um, Can anyone tell me what I didn't talk about but I included on every page of this setup? Let me know what you think it is down in the comments below Thank you so much to those people who suggested prompt words for my art on cue series for the New Zealand one I've now chosen a winner from the entries submitted and it is cloud from beginner crafter 
So thank you very much. And I, if you guys want to create something relating to the word cloud, then feel free. Otherwise, come back in two weeks and you'll see what I create. And as of next week, we're going to be choosing the next country. So come back then for me to reveal the options and you can help vote for the next calendar month. Um, all right, guys, that's all I have. And thank you so much for watching. And I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you soon. Bye.